Hello everyone, I'm Blake and I'm a firmware developer co-op here at Northern Mechatronics. I'm a computer science student at the University of Waterloo and today I'm going to be showing you the Arduino compatibility of our products that you're at Northern Mechatronics. So what you see before you is a robotic plant watering system. Now we'll go more into depth on what that actually means and how everything works in a moment, but first let's discuss the design and the reasoning behind this project. As you can see, this project is made up of three main parts. We've got the plant watering robot itself, the track on which it runs, and the smart plant pots, which tell the robot when they need to be watered. And when they say that they need to be watered, the robot will drive on by, it will stop in front of them, and it will water them as they need it. So this project was done entirely in Arduino using the Arduino programming language in the Arduino IDE. And this was done to showcase the compatibility between our ecosystem and Arduino, and thus it is making it more accessible to a wider audience and making it easier for people with less experience to get their hands dirty and get going with microcontrollers and electronics through Arduino using our products. Also, since NMI specializes in wireless communication, this project was implemented wirelessly using LoRaWAN. Okay, now that we've got the basics, let's take a deeper look into how these parts work. Let's start with the robot itself. Inside the robot here, we can see that its brain is the NM180100 on our evaluation kit. The NM180100 possesses an Ambic Apollo 3 microcontroller and a Semtec SX1262 transceiver. This allows us to deliver an end-to-end -end low power chain of components, enabling ultra low power computing and ultra low power wireless communication. Plugged into that, we have the Adafruit Motor Shield V2. That controls the driving and the pumping of water. Here we have the water pump, and one of the hoses of the water pump goes up and out, and this is the end that waters the plants, and the other end goes down into the water reservoir. Down below we have the main drive motor, which is geared directly to the front axle by this gear. On the front wheels, we have these rubber bands wrapped around them to use as tires to get better grip. Here is the water reservoir, which can be removed for easier filling, and down here is the IR sensor that detects when to stop to start watering a plant. Everything is powered by three double A's, which live back here, and are wired through to the board by these wires. Now let's take a look at the plant pot. This one is simpler, but just as important. The most critical part is this stack of boards, which are all part of our new development platform called the Pedal Ecosystem, launching in 2024. In this stack, we have the pedal core, which has the NM18100 on it. On top, we have the environment pedal, which contains an IMU and a gas sensor, and on the bottom we have the power pedal which provides power to the entire thing. The pedal core has the NM18100 on it, so it does all the thinking. The environment pedal allows the pot to interface with its surroundings. This connection on the left goes to this soil sensor which can measure the temperature and capacitance of soil. The capacitance tells us how wet the soil is since as moisture content goes up, so does capacitance. The other pair of wires on the right side goes to an IR sensor that is attached to the track. This is used as a beacon to tell the robot to stop. When the plant has requested a watering, it turns on this IR sensor, which sends a beam of infrared light that the sensor on the bottom of the robot can see. Finally, the power pedal connects to the battery or to USB-C through these ports on the bottom. The whole stack fits nicely in this little backpack on the pot, which has holes for the necessary wires coming out of the bottom. The battery fits into a slot on the bottom of the pot for a nice compact design. Let's talk about the IR sensors for a moment. We've used the same sensor both on the track and on the robot. This may not immediately make sense. These IR sensors are intended to be used to detect something by emitting a beam and picking up the beam as it bounces off of an object. Their intended range is around 3 millimeters. Since we want the robot to stop at a specific pot and skip others rather than trying to put some reflector in the readable range of the sensor on the robot, we chose to have another sensor facing upwards. This sensor's beam shines directly into the detector on the robot, so it's not picking up its own reflected beam, but rather the beam of the other sensor. The sensor in the track isn't reading at all. In fact, the pin that sends the output isn't even wired up. The advantage of this solution is that to get the robot to stop, rather than trying to move something in the way mechanically, all we have to do is turn on this IR sensor electronically and it'll be picked up by the robot. So, how do these plants tell the robot that they need to be watered? 
Well, that's where the Laura Wang comes in. When this plant, which periodically checks this soil sensor to see the moisture level of the soil, if the soil's moisture level is too low, it sends an uplink to AWS. Now the plant pot is running on class A. That means that when it's not measuring or transmitting, it can put the processor to sleep, which means that you get a longer battery life. On AWS, I've written a message routing rule that sends the message that this pot sends and routes it to a Lambda function, and the Lambda function then downlinks that message to the robot. The code for the Lambda function will be in the documentation, which will be linked in the description. The robot operates on LoRaWAN class C, which means it's always listening for a message. Fortunately, the NM18100 that's in here can turn off the processor while still leaving the radio on, and the radio can wake up the processor when it receives a message. When this receives a message, it checks to make sure that the message is, please come water a plant, and if it is, it starts driving along, and it only stops when it arrives at one of these beacons, which is turned on. When it arrives at a turned on beacon, it turns on the pump and waters the plant. And once it's done that, it goes back to sleep and awaits a new message. So let's see this thing in action. As you can see, I've only got two plant pots right now, but this is expandable infinitely as long as you have the plant pot next to the track and the IR beacon to tell the robot when to stop. Um, and of course, this is clearly a tech demo, but you could see how it could be useful or something like it could be useful in agriculture as a form of precision irrigation. Uh, you could use this or something like this to only water the plants that need to be watered rather than watering them all, and thus you'd be saving water. So to demonstrate how this works, I'm not gonna wait around for the four hours on the cycle of these plant monitors. I have a manual override just to say, water this plant or water that plant just by the push of a button. So I'm gonna start with this plant. I press the button here and we wait a moment for the signal to go, and the robot starts driving. And as you're gonna see, it won't stop at this plant because that's not the one that called it and the IR beacon isn't on. So it's gonna go all the way around. It'll stop at this plant, it'll water it for, I think, 20 seconds, and then it'll go back to sleep because once it's done, it just has to go back to sleep and wait for another call. So it's gonna arrive in a moment and it'll start watering. And there you go, it's now watering the plant so that it'll water for 20 seconds. And once that's done, it will go back to sleep and it'll be ready for another call from another plant. So it just finished watering. And now let's call it over to this plant to water this plant as well. And as you can see, it starts driving and it's gonna arrive at this plant, no problem. And it should start watering. And once it's done watering this one, it'll just go back to sleep as well. And as you can see, it's now watering this plant happily. And once it's done, this plant will be watered and it will be done its task. And it will just go back to sleep and await another call from any other plant that needs to be watered. And that's it. Make sure to check out the description of the video for more information. Down there is the GitHub repo for this project. It has all the CAD files, all the code, all the documentation and everything you need to understand what's going on here if this video didn't do a good enough job at that. Uh, also down in the description, there's links to buy our products. So make sure to check those out. I hope you all enjoyed and thank you for watching.